What's up everybody, it's me Zombie, and today I'm going to be showing you how I painted my Sarah Ryder armor from Mass Effect Andromeda. If you want to see how this was constructed, you can click my link right down below and it'll link you to the last video that I made on how I constructed this armor. Overall, this armor was super fun to paint, and honestly, this is always my favorite part in finishing a costume. After Plassy dipping and giving everything a white coat of spray paint, I'm using some gray acrylic paint and going over all the spots that I'm matching to my reference photo. To mix my gray, I'm just doing mostly white and adding a little tiny drop of black and then mixing it together. I went ahead and kept mixing until I got the right color from my reference pictures. I added a couple of base coats to all of the parts that were a gray color. For the base coats, I used a wider brush and a little bit more paint. On the belt, you can see that I'm using a teeny tiny brush and really going in all these little crevices and details with dark gray and black acrylic paint. The acrylic paint that I use isn't fancy at all. I usually just pick up some cheap brands from Hobby Lobby or Joann's, just whatever is available. I layered these colors over and over to give it a little bit of a weathered effect. I used everything from a white all the way to a black and everything in between. For my forearm pieces, I went in with a black and surrounded all of those little details with some black and faded everything out with a paper towel. For my shoulders, I went in with my small brush, added some dark details, and really feathered everything out with a dry brush. For these larger sockets here on my forearm, I'm using some black and filling in those details. To add some dust around the corners here, I'm taking some tan and sienna acrylic paint and adding in some details around the corner. After brushing this color on, I'll usually go in with my fingers or with a paper towel and kind of dab around the color to make it look more dusty. After my belt has all of its base colors on, I just added some light highlights around some of the darker areas with some white acrylic paint. This just helps some of the details pop a little bit more. And on the shoulders, I did the exact same thing. For the shoulders, I went in with a teeny tiny little brush and added the Andromeda symbol right onto the shoulder. For the thighs, I'm really making sure that all that black acrylic paint is sitting in all of those creases just like I want it to. For the hands, the majority of the paintwork was done with a teeny tiny little paintbrush just because the finger bits are so intricate and small. For this, I used gray, black, and some blue acrylic paints to really finish all these details. Next up is the airbrush. I'm using some black airbrush paint with my airbrush and I'm going over all of these little creases and details around here. To be honest, I'm pretty new with an airbrush so I'm definitely still learning. Needless to say, airbrushing is super fun and I can't wait to get better at it. I'm really going in all of these side details right here just to make sure that all the paint is sitting where I want it to and really helping all of those little details pop even better. And of course, this tutorial wouldn't be complete if I wasn't covered in paint myself. After my black airbrush paint was done on my shins, I realized that I should really go back over with some white acrylic paint to kind of reel everything back and to make my details a little bit more subtle. And I use this technique with the entirety of the armor. With my air compressor, it does overheat if I use it for more than 15 to 20 minutes at a time. So I was finding that I had to turn off my air compressor and let it cool down while I did some other things while I was waiting to finish everything. Needless to say, I did really like the results with airbrushing. And I'll probably be investing in a better compressor here in the future. For the undersuit, I'm using some of the same techniques as I did with the armor. I'm just using the same exact airbrush paint and using it right on my undersuit. Surprisingly, it ended up holding up really well. If you're interested in learning about how I made my undersuit for my Sarah Ryder cosplay, then don't you worry, I will be uploading a detailed video very soon. Here are my butt pieces. Luckily, since these are flat so far, I can just lay them down and use my airbrush to go around the edges to give it a nice weathered effect. And of course, the shoes. They have come a long way from being some old work boots ever since I covered them in foam and spray painted them. And now it's time for them to be airbrushed. This is where they really start to transform. 
For the numbers and little details on the armor, I went right over the top of them with a pencil and drew out the details that I saw in my reference photos. On the back of Sarah Ryder's armor, it says O2, along with a little serial ID number right under it. So I drew these details on very gently with a pencil. And if you draw it on gently enough, you can even erase it if you make a mistake, even though I'm doing it on white paint. When I erased my mistakes, nothing showed up. It turned out really nicely. After putting my design down in pencil, I used a black sharpie and went over all of my outside lines and then filled everything in. After my sharpie was added, I went over some of the edges with a white acrylic paint and a very bristly brush. This helps the decal look more worn and uniform with the rest of the costume. For my spine piece that I constructed in the last video, I used the same technique of really going in with my airbrush. After adding all the decals, and I know that everything is airbrushed and done, I went ahead and coated everything with a Tamiya brand spray gloss. This makes the armor look super shiny, just like it does in the game, and it's gonna prepare it for the next step of weathering that we're about to do. Now that everything is all weathered and sealed with that glossy coat, it's time to add on those awesome chromey details. What's cool with sci-fi armor is that a lot of the time the paint has been scraped off to reveal this chromey, metally stuff right underneath. To give that effect, I'm going over a lot of the corners and edges and other little random spots with some chrome spray paint. I'm using brushes in varying sizes. My favorite one is this teeny tiny little brush that I'm using right here and really going over a lot of the edges. After my little sparkly edges have been added, I use my larger bristle brush with a little bit of spray paint and go over some of the edges and over some of the base coat of the paint just to give it that scraped off paint look. Just like, you know, some of the paint has been scraped off and just a little bit of that chrome is showing underneath. I think it looks really awesome and it really helps finish the piece. To really help those little chrome details pop, I go over some of the edges with a Sharpie. The chrome is on a white coat of paint. It's really hard to kind of distinguish the chrome from the white since they're so similar. So outlining these details in Sharpie it looks really cool and it almost emulates if dirt got stuck in between the paint and the chrome. There's really no right or wrong way to do this, but I just think this part looks really cool. And I'm giving my little boots the same treatment. I'm really liking how these look and they ended up looking really cool and uniform with the rest of the costume. Sarah Ryder's armor has this cool little light in the back. For a light cover, I didn't have any Petgy or Clear Warblub. I did have some packaging left over from some elastic, so I reused that by cutting out an appropriately sized piece and then making it foggy and diffused with some sandpaper. This really helps diffuse the light. I just got some really simple EL wire that I got off of Amazon and glued it into the back right under my diffused cover piece. And ta-da! Everything is all put together, and it was so fun wearing this Sarah Ryder costume for Logitech at PAX East. I had a blast making it, and I hope this video helps you guys make something really cool of your own. If you have any questions, please post them right down below. I'll get back to them as soon as I possibly can. Tell me what you all want to see next, and I'll see you next time. Bye!